Oh gosh, everybody, it's been a very busy day for me. Now it's about 9.24 at night. And I'll tell you what, there is nothing I want more to do right now than to simply pull into a restaurant and get something good. Yes, Hello sir. there. What do you have that's good? Well, I got a large clock radio. That sounds more than fair to me. So let's dig into this thing and see what I got. This is the World Star AM FM alarm clock radio. And really, there's not a whole lot very exciting about this thing. No real feature set that sets it apart from any other clock radio or puts it leaps and bounds ahead of the competition. Still, for something that dates from the mid to late 70s, i.e. 1977 or 76, somewhere in there, it's not too bad by those standards and probably would have been a pretty pr impressive piece of equipment back in the day. The one thing that does make this radio unique is the white thing that's sticking up out of the top. I'll talk a little bit more about what that is later, but I'm sure some of you have already guessed. The clock itself is fully digital with an LED display. And there is one other relatively unique feature here. You get your standard alarm setting, sleep setting, fast, slow, and seconds buttons. This thing actually lets you synchronize the seconds if you so desired. Although right now the fast and seconds buttons definitely need a good bit of cleaning before they'll work properly. The only buttons that work properly right now are alarm, sleep, and slow, as well as release. Now, release is kind of an unusually named button, but what it does is pretty straightforward. It allows you to actually set the clock. Note that there is no reverse setting on the clock, so if you overshoot the time that you want, you'll have to wrap around and go all the way again to get back to it. If the fast function worked properly, and it does work sporadically, however, that wouldn't take any degree of time at all. This thing is lightning quick when you press down that fast button. It's wicked. In fact, it's almost too fast. And then, of course, there's the AM-FM radio. And if I go ahead and turn this on over here, the activation switch is at the side. The dial should light up, but it's got the same disease that a lot of other things this thing's age do. It's got burnt out incandescent light bulbs that light up the dial display. Fortunately, the wonder of night shot allows us to see the dial scale and what's going on in there. It also lets us see the digits in the display and you can see that there are actually plus signs in that display which is an interesting deviation from the normal seven segment display whether or not there's actual LEDs behind those elements is anyone's guess but there's the dial lighting and I suspect that simply replacing that with a suitable rectifying diode current limiting resistor and an LED would be more than sufficient to bring it around and bring it fully back to life and to keep it very happy for a very long time now the sound from this unit's pretty decent, but it's not as good as it could be because the speaker is a relatively tiny, I'd say, three inch job that fires down from the bottom of the unit. So it doesn't sound bad, but it doesn't sound great either. It's certainly not the uh, ear, ear shattering, earth shattering sound that some clock radios manage to deliver from a completely unlikely enclosure. However, heading back to the clock for a moment, there is another cool feature in addition to the thing sticking up out of the top. As you can see here, there is a, is a dial on the front that says intensity. And what that dial does is it lets you adjust the brightness and it lets you adjust it completely free range. That is to say, you don't have to pick a high, low, or a medium setting. All you have to do is turn the wheel to the brightness that you like. And in complete darkness, it's pretty bright. If I go ahead and wind it down, turn the light off in my room again, you can see it's much dimmer now. In fact, it's quite a bit dimmer than the good old Sony over there. But I like the Sony because it has thin red numbers and it also works completely properly. So it's probably going to maintain its place at least for the moment. Unless, of course, I should happen to get this thing completely overhauled, repaired, and figured out after I've proven it to be reliable. Now, the FM side of the radio works just fine. Somebody once mentioned that if I 
kept the piano station up, they were going to turn the video off. Well, that's the area public radio station. They also have a television station. And there are two reasons why I like that station. It's not really uh, classical and piano music and things like that aren't really my cup of tea, although I can certainly listen to them. But their FM signal is excellent. It's extremely strong. It covers a huge geographical area, and it's not really been beaten up too much. It's only very lightly compressed and whatever processing they're using on their FM signal is excellent. Their AM signal is quite good as well, but they almost never play any kind of music on AM, and they're certainly not broadcasting in AM stereo. Luckily, they're not broadcasting with HD radio on AM. Thank goodness for small miracles. We're going through the dial here. The FM tuning is not really as sensitive as I'd expect it to be. It certainly picks up a few stations across the dial. But my guess is that it could probably stand a good recapping, especially since the AM section, which is switched over here using a knob that is on the outside of the tuning wheel, is completely silent, save for the faint AC hum coming from the speaker. There is no sign of life on the AM band whatsoever. So yeah, it could probably stand a good recapping. With all that stuff out of the way, it's time for what makes this thing interesting. Some of you have probably been wondering about what this is. Some of you may have figured it out already. This is a lamp, of all things. And it actually has two functions. If you turn the switch on while the lamp is parked inside the unit, it only illuminates this little diffuser. And I suppose that's intended for use as a kind of a nightlight, just like that. Now there are, there are three positions to this switch. There's an off position, there's a low position, and there's a high position. But with the lamp parked like this, the internal wiring of the unit does not allow the lamp to go to the high position, probably for heat concerns. They're probably worried about too much heat building up in this closed space. But if you take the lamp out, and you can actually tilt it and rotate it around fairly freely, it does not telescope, however, you can actually go and turn the lamp not only on low, but also on high, which is a great deal brighter. There is a switch in the back, a pressure switch, right in there that keeps the unit from going to the high lamp setting. And of course the back end is very well ventilated, which really makes sense considering that the power transformer in there is pretty hefty. Probably most of that's to power the lamp though. And it's easy to park the lamp away when you're done with it. There's a hookup for a pillow speaker. And of course, on top there is a snooze button. Snooze with an E. And of course if you press the alarm button, you can see the time that the alarm is set to go off. In order to actually set the alarm, you have to do a three-finger salute. You have to press alarm, you have to press release, and you have to press either slow or fast in order to be able to set the alarm. But I can't do that very well right now, so you'll have to take my word for it that that's how it works. As for the World Star name, you would almost expect something like this to be capable of 24-hour timekeeping or 220-volt operation, but it's not. I suspect that that's the, just the name that was convenient for whoever, whoever sold these things to use. This unit was made in Japan, probably by some nameless contract manufacturer. But a little searching of the World Wide Web did turn up the fact that a shortwave radio was also sold under the World Star name. So maybe it was the first product of the bunch. It's hard to tell for sure. But now you've heard the complete story about the World Star AM FM clock radio. And if you know anything more about this unit, or you happen to have one of your own, or something that looks very similar to it, I would certainly love to hear from you. So thank you for watching, and feel free to leave a comment.